A few weeks ago, I had the absolute privilege of attending the St. Louis Renaissance Festival, and I thought it would be kind of fun to break down my garb, or my costume, how I got ready for the Ren Fair, where I ordered everything, how I made everything. I also think this video would be really, really helpful for people who are trying to create their first fantasy-esque, Renaissance Fair-esque outfit, because this video will show you what all the individual pieces look like and where you can get them and how they can be styled together. I went to the Renaissance Festival dressed as my D&D character, the obnoxious little shit, Mr. Dorian Dugman. Dorian is heavily inspired by Peter Pan. I used this photo as reference when I first started playing him. It's just a random picture from Google that my DM found, but this was kind of the basis for what my costume was gonna look like. I'm going to be showing you all of the items as I get dressed, just because I thought that was the best way to organize all of this, so let's get started. The first thing that I put on when I'm getting ready is my socks. These actually are not the actual socks that I wore for the Ren Fair. These are gray stripes. The socks that I actually wore were brown with stripes. You can see them in this video of me walking in this little video that my girlfriend took at the fair. I cannot find them for the life of me. They came in a pack of three from I think Walmart. I've had them for years because I had to buy them for when I was in Newsies. So the first thing I put on that's not my socks is this white peasant t-shirt. It has been aged and modified. I actually have an entire video of my process of prepping this shirt for the Renaissance Fair. I got it off of Amazon. I know, I also hate Mr. Bezos. When I first got it, it was very clean and fresh looking, which obviously didn't fit the vibe. So I did quite a few modifications on it. After I put it on, I just kind of adjust these little leather thingy, make sure the collar's how I like it. And then I do roll my sleeves sleeves up. So I just start rolling them, take them like this, fold them over, and then roll it up with the fold. Voila! The shirt is on. Next up is the pants, which I think might quite literally be my favorite item of clothing that I have ever owned. My pants for my garb came in today. These are the pants. We literally ordered them last night at like 11.30 at night and they've already come in. Here they are. Look at them, oh my God. <laughs> I'm literally so fucking excited. I will say I was hoping that they would be a bit of a brighter shade of green than what they are, just because they tend to show up more brown on camera and in photos. But for the price and how many different things I can do with these for upcoming costumes, I don't really care that much. You guys are about to lose your shit. Are you ready for this? Are you fucking ready? I, you can't see me, the camera's too high, hold on. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. I love these pants with my whole heart and soul. They're literally some of the most comfortable pants I've ever worn in my entire life. I've actually started wearing them as pajama bottoms because they are so comfortable. Obviously, I tucked my shirt in and tied the elastic. And these pants also have super deep pockets, which I love so much. Because it was super convenient at the Ren Fair, I kept my camera case in one pocket and my phone in the other. We love a good pocket. The next thing I put on are my shoes. I wore these brown little lace-up shoes. These were actually a gift from a student director who directed the one act I was in my freshman year of high school. I wore these as part of my costume that used to belong to her, and then when the show was over, she was like, you can just keep them. Since these were a gift, I'm not entirely sure where you can get them or if they still make them, but the inside of the sole says Forever 21. I thought they went really, really well with the costume, plus they were really comfortable, and I am a sucker for using things that I already own so I don't have to spend more money. Next is probably my favorite part of my entire costume, which is this thick ass belt with a bunch of fun things attached to it. We're gonna talk a little bit more about all the things that are on the actual belt in a minute, but for now we're gonna talk about the belt itself. I got this belt off of eBay purely because it was the cheapest belt that I could find. Unfortunately, that means I can't give you a link to where you can buy your own version of this belt because I have no idea where it came from. This belt is four inches thick. I use it to kind of cover up where my shirt and my pants meet and it looks a little more polished like my clothes actually fit me the 
pockets are actually super helpful. I use this pocket to keep my cash while I was at the Ren Fair, and I use this pocket to keep all the business cards from the small businesses and all the different booths. The thing I love most about costumes is adding texture. This belt adds so much texture. Not even just talking about the stuff that's on the belt, but the belt itself. It gives me good layers, it gives me buckles, snaps, ties, metal, eyelets. Such a good variation of texture. This belt is actually too loose on me, so instead of faceting it with the actual belt loops, I tied the edge of the belts to some of these eyelets. Some of these fake leather strips that I bought at a craft store. This belt was actually one of the most important parts of making sure I got this costume right. Knowing Dorian's story and his background and what he would have access to, his costume was going to be really simple. I mean, this is what I was basing it off of. <laughs> I wanted something that would look a little bit cooler. Theft is a very big part of his character. So the idea behind the belt is that I would create replicas of some of the items that Dorian has in his inventory, and then I would hang those replicas from my belt. That way the costume wasn't just a shirt and pants, it gave it texture, it gave it layers, and it made the outfit more personal to the character. People at the Rin Fair lost their shit over these potion bottles. They were by far the most complimented piece of my entire costume. I have been considering making an entire YouTube video on how to make different types of potion bottles. But for now, let's just talk about how I made the potions that I am currently wearing. The first thing I did was talk to my DM and ask for a more detailed description of what the bottles looked like. So the potion colors are green and red. The green potion bottle has the Greek symbol for power on it. And then the symbol on the red potions is the Greek symbol for fire. The paper I used for these potions was just plain computer paper that I watercolor painted over just to make it look aged. Then I pulled up a picture of the symbol on my phone and just traced it using black pen. And then I colored the whole thing in using black watercolor. I just tore around the symbol, like tearing it out of the paper so that the edges would look a little bit more rough and attached them to my bottles using glue. Next, it's time to start making the actual potion liquid. These circular bottles that have leather already attached to them are from Amazon. They were kind of expensive. They were $10 each, which I can't say I would have bought myself, but they were gifted to me as a birthday present. I think it's cool because these are all potions that my D&D character stole from a house guarded by wolves. <laughs> and I'm just here for shits and giggles. <laughs> These potions are actually incredibly easy to make. All I did was fill my little bottle the same amount of water as I wanted to have potions. So we filled it with water. Then I dropped in some food coloring, give it a nice shake so that it all mixes together. And then what really makes the potion look magical is mica powder. I used some gold Pearl X mica powder and I just put a little bit in and I shook it around. That's why you can see the liquid moving so well. That's why it's so shiny. And depending on the color you use, it can actually have a slight color change. It should be noted that if you're going to be using potion bottles that are shut with a little cork, you might want to seal them with something more than just the cork. This can mean hot glue. For this little bottle, I try to seal it with wax. Cork is incredibly porous, and so there's nothing stopping your liquid from evaporating through it or just soaking through it. And I just attach the potions to my belt using the same fake leather string stuff that I used to tie my actual belt onto my body. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> 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 Next up, we have these funky looking beads. Dorian steals a lot of shit, I will say. This necklace kind of reminded me of coins and it's kind of supposed to represent all of the shiny things that Dorian has stolen. Plus, I just really liked the look of something hanging really loose. I got these from the little costume bucket back home. I either got them on a pirate ship that I went on when I was a wee lad or they were gifted to me at the pirates and princess party at Disney World. I just drooped them over my belt and I let them hang. When it came to picking weapons for my D&D character, I chose a slingshot just because I like to imagine this little 12 year old boy shooting acorns and rocks at random people. I got my wooden slingshot from Lynchburg, Tennessee, and I attached it to my belt using, you guessed it, the same leather string I've used to attach literally everything else. 
that's it. That's my Renaissance Fair costume. I really, really hope you enjoyed this video. I have spent months planning and putting this outfit together, and so I'm really excited to share it. Anyway, thank you so, so much for watching. I would love to hear about your D&D characters, about your in fair costumes, about anything fun and fantasy. Thank you so, so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you in next week's video. Bye!